Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts. And in the last Omega video, we went over the admin theme settings uh, for Omega 4. In this video, we're going to talk about the files that came with your Omega theme. And since we're going to be doing most of the work in the files, uh, it's only appropriate that we give a good rundown about exactly what you're getting. Now, uh, as we've mentioned before in Omega 3, you did a lot of your configuration and a lot of your grid settings in the uh, settings menu. However, here we're going to be doing it all with CSS, which if you are familiar with CSS and tools like SAS, uh, you're going to be very happy about that. If you're not, uh, it might scare you a little bit, but to be honest, it's for the best, it's really easy, and you just have to practice a little bit or get used to it, and I'm sure you're going to be uh, a pro in no time. It's really not that intense or anything. So let's check it out. We have our basic folder structure here, and I'm actually gonna zoom in here. Forgive me if this gets a little uh, uh, pixelated here. I'm just zooming in on the screen. And we have inside of our level up Omega theme, we have a CSS folder which contains four CSS files. It's just our general styles, normalize, uh, no query, and Omega hacks. And you know what? We rarely need to actually go into this directory. Now, why is that? It's because we're writing our CSS actually in SAS files, which get compiled into CSS. Now, if you were so inclined, you could totally just, you know, throw in a CSS grid framework. You could come in here and just start editing this styles.css file to basically treat it like it's just CSS, right? But then you'd be ignoring most of the wonderful things that this uh, Omega 4 is including and, uh, with the SAS functionality. So if you're not familiar, take some time to get familiar. I promise it's well worth it. So let's hide that for now. Um, of course, in images, there's not going to be anything. We haven't put any images in here. These are going to be images that you're using with your theme, things like background images, images for CSS uh, that you're going to be using um, in your code. And then in we have our JS, which this is going to be our user JS. So this isn't going to be our libraries or anything like that, but this is going to be where the JavaScript that you write goes. And notice how it's a dot behaviors dot JS. And now I'm gonna zoom out for a second just so you can see some of this document. Now we're going to go over what exactly all of this stuff is. But uh, if you see this drupal.theme.prototype uh, stuff or down here drupal.behaviors, this stuff may look really confusing. It's not. In fact, it's for your benefit. Again, um, that's the one thing that's great about Omega is all this stuff is for your benefit. Uh, and of course, we're gonna go over how exactly you can be using JavaScript. You can see it's a little bit different. They have to add these paragraphs to explain it. You can go ahead and read that if you'd like, but we're gonna go over that in the JavaScript video. Now, let's close this up and let's check out the libraries. So again, I'm gonna zoom in here. And uh, these are the libraries that we've checked. And basically by checking these libraries, uh, we're, we're just saying we want to enable them, right? But to get them, it was actually downloaded when we installed our theme. And if you look in our uh, the theme that we did without Drush, these aren't going to be in here. So if you uh, installed your theme without Drush, these probably won't be in here, and you'll have to run a Bower command to get them to download or use the uh, libraries.make file that's included in here that has specific instructions how to do that. But you'll notice these are you know just the JS files. And again, uh, these exist, but you really are most likely not going to have to dive into them for any particular reason, unless you just want to look at their source and check it out, see what's going on, which I, in, in that case, I would recommend doing that. So let's get out of libraries. And now if we go down, we have preprocess. And now in preprocess, it contains just a page.preprocess.inc. And uh, let's zoom out again. And this is really a preprocess page hook. And it really just allows you to modify things before anything, right? So this is preprocess. This is happening first. 
right? So basically any changes that happen here are going to be happening before the process functions are called uh, at, a later, at a later phase. And uh, basically anything you want to alter, you can throw in your pre-process. And then we have the process folder, which includes the process. So these are just for making changes later in the process phase. Um, if you're not familiar with this stuff, if you're doing mostly CSS, you probably won't have to touch this. But in, in case you're going to be needing to modify Drupal with some hooks, you're going to want to get in here. Now we have this SAS folder, which is really quite uh, excellent here. So if we open this up, you'll notice there's a bunch of folders. We have abstractions, base, components, variables, and then we have the CSS file. Well, these are SCSS files, but these are the CSS files that we saw within CSS. So mega styles, normalize, no query, hacks. And we're gonna go over exactly um, the SAS stuff. You can see this import statement. Uh, it might be a little bit foreign to you, but we're gonna go over it all, rest assured. And we have all these folders, right? We have variables. So with things like SAS, you're going to define things like your colors for variables inside of a colors.scss file that gets compiled into your styles that gets output onto your page. And, uh, and basically by pulling all these components out into separate partial uh, uh, SAS files, SCSS files, we're able to really have nice structured CSS. And this really allows for sites to grow and have the very organized code. We also have components, which are for things like navigation, search, basically components of your site you'd fill in here. Uh, base uh, basically contains like base styles, things that you would include like your headers. So your typography, your tables, basically things that you're going to be defining like H1 is always going to be like this. H2 is always going to be like this or paragraph tag default styles are this will be going in these typography. Um, and now abstractions, uh, this folder is going to contain things like your mix-ins, um, basically things that you want to pull out that aren't necessarily defining code that are just more abstract. And again, we're going to be going over the true meaning of what that is and how to do it later. So that's the first half of the files. In the next video, I'm going to go over about the second half of the files that came with our theme and what they do and if you need to worry about them or not. Uh, a lot of these files are going to be either for advanced users or maybe they're just for configuration things and you don't even need to touch them at all. So check out the next video and see what you need to edit and what maybe you can just dig into if you want to. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts and thanks for watching. Bye.